Hi, Michael. I'm J.R. Foresteros from Think Christian. It's so good to talk with you. Yeah, great to talk to you. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. And congrats on the movie. It was uh, a ton of fun. Thanks so much. So I'm curious, this, you know, this is your third film in the Conjuring verse. And these are all, you know, all of these movies are specifically possession horror. Is that your favorite kind of horror? It's uh, until they find a, another way to get a demon in you. I, uh, I, I'm sticking with <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so, and again, obviously, you know, the nun specifically is drawing on a lot of uh, Catholic imagery. Uh, is that, is what is your religious background? Like, how does that inform your work specifically on, on this film? I, I grew up Catholic. I, um, that was like the first question that they asked when they were hiring me. They were like, <laughs> no, j just kidding. I, I, you know, grew up Catholic and, you know, that's uh, fully confirmed and everything. So, um, if anyone out there is wondering, uh <laughs> I, you know, I always love like, you know, the Catholic church, you know, has it's like, you know, fans and detractors. And I still think it's a, you know, an amazing organization. We got the best churches out there. Let's just be honest. Um, and <laughs> I think that there's, there's so much great history around Catholicism and, and the church, uh, you know, the beyond just Catholicism, the the Conjuring movies are always stories about faith. And I think that that's something that I really appeals to me. And I think it's just really powerful. And I think whether it takes the form of religion or whatever it is, I, I think human beings really crave faith. They have this deep need for it. I think that there is this deep spiritual need in all of us. And I mean, it's even like, I think it's part of the success of, of Star Wars. I think it's because of the religious component of it. It's the spiritual component in there. And, and it takes different shapes in different, like, you know, different movies. But I think that that's always something that's really important. And um, obviously the nun plays like definitely towards like more towards Catholics and towards the Catholic faith. But like, I think that that's one of the strengths of the, of the, the whole conjuring universe. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, uh, so I don't want to spoil anything because there were a lot of fun surprises in this film, but eyes play a pretty important role. And I, I'm curious because, I mean, no, no pun intended at all, but a lot of the eyeball imagery is very visual, which I'm assuming has more to do with what you're doing to create these tableaus than what was necessarily on the scripts that you got. So, I mean, can you talk a little bit about St. Lucy and that, that crazy painting that you show that I'm assuming is a real painting. Yeah, that's a real painting. You know, St. Lucy is, um, so the, the original script that, that um, Akela Cooper wrote the original script, she did a fantastic job. And that's one of the big reasons that I signed on to the, the movie. It's just like incredible script by Akela. Um, it did not have St. Lucy in the original draft and it was a fictionalized script. And I think that that was honestly like growing up, it was a fictionalized uh, saint. And so growing up Catholic, I was like, that was one thing I was like, I don't think we can do this. It needs to be, <laughs> there's like a million saints. You got to right. pick any one of them. It needs to be a real saint. And, um, and then the funny thing is that, um, I was talking with uh, DLJ who, uh, you know, wrote Conjuring 3 and, and we were just kind of tossing around ideas and he had actually brought up St. Lucy and we started talking about that imagery and there's so much great um, paintings and imagery like the, the famous one is the one that um, Guillermo del Toro kind of uh, basically ripped off for Pan's Labyrinth with like right. St. Lucy with like, like eyes on her hands and that became the monster that like, uh, that, uh, that, that he, he, he used in Pan's Labyrinth. And so I was like, oh, that's awesome. And I actually wanted to use that painting in this, um, but uh, it, we actually couldn't get the rights to it. It was a strange thing, but there's so many great uh, St. Lucie paintings and that's a real painting. We just, we found that one and it's, it's really unsettling. And I think that like the, the holes in her eyes and like yes. on a platter, also just like the eyes on a platter is so weird. It's just so like, weird. <laughs> why is she holding her eyes on a platter? <laughs> Well, and, and then again, it ties in really nicely to this faith element in the movie, because, you know, one of the famous scriptures is, you know, faith is, is you know, without sight, right? And so you have to believe these things. And that's even a, a conversation that the two main sisters have right at the beginning of the film, which I really appreciated. And again, is that all, that's all stuff that was in the original script, or was that once you had St. Lucy and had to bring all that in? 
You know, that was something that we developed. I think that we, um, as I kind of was digging into it and I was developing it, it was something that I really wanted. You know, Irene is fully, her journey of faith is, is much more just internal. It's more her believing in herself. Um, and she has already gone on this journey of committing to being a nun in the first film. So it's not like we can do, make her journey being one of committing to God or, or finding faith. Um, so it, it kind of naturally became a more internal one. I still wanted to tell a story of faith. And I felt like Deborah really had that. I think that Deborah's story of, of, you know, being this novitiate, you know, and having these big questions of just not believing the kind of the core, the core concepts of the Catholic faith about the, the blessing of the wine. And, and I thought that that was, that was a really powerful idea. And so I really wanted to put that um, on her. So it was something we developed, you know, these movies, it's funny how like they develop like all the way, like into the end, like, you know, where, you know, into the last minute when you're like <laughs> mixing the sound and you're just like, it's always like an ongoing kind of process. Well, thank you, Michael, so much. And again, congrats on the movie. Thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it.